in the Lord's house. We appreciate each and every one that's come out to be with us today. And, uh, our only objective this morning is to worship the one whose name is worthy to be called upon, the one that saved us from our sins if we're saved, the one that is seated at the right hand of the Father, making an intercession for us. I, I'm glad that I know him. I hope you do this morning. What a day it would be if you could just get acquainted with him. And, and we're going to do everything we can to lift him up so you can behold him and desire him and come to know him as your personal Savior. If you're visiting, we're so glad that you've come our way. have several folks that are visiting this morning, and we're glad that you've come to Batley. You could have went to hundreds of other churches in our area, but you chose Batley to come to, and we're honored. And we want to make sure that we do everything in our power this morning to make you feel welcome in the house of God. Stand with us this morning. We're going to ask our ushers. They're going to come. We're going to receive our morning tithes and offerings. Let's bow our heads as we pray together. Father, we thank you for the privilege to be in this place this morning. We pray for those, Lord, that are not able to be here due to sickness and death of their loved ones. Lord, we pray that you'll comfort them the comfort that only you're capable of giving. I pray, Father, that you'll bless this offering. Lord, may it be used so that the gospel can go out and reach a lost and dying world. And, Father, help us this morning, Lord, just to recognize that everything we have, Lord, it comes from your bountiful hand. And, Lord, help us to be careful to offer you the thanksgiving and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Please remain standing. Help the choir to sing as we receive the offering.
My favorite phrase in that song is that he knew me and yet he loved me. In spite of me, his grace was extended. I, I'm so thankful. A lot of things in life that I regret, a lot of things that I wish that I could go back and have a do-over, but, you know, no way to do that. There's no way to go back. A lot of things that uh, I would do differently, but there's one thing that I wouldn't change. That's the day that I trusted Jesus Christ to be my Savior. I've uh, met a lot of sorry Christians in my life. I've been a sorry Christian. But I've never met anybody that was sorry that they trusted the Lord. Good to be here this morning. Appreciate each and every one that's with us. I have several announcements, and I'm just going to make half of them. And half of them tonight because uh, I'm a little bit overwhelmed with so many announcements this morning. But I I'm going to tell you the good things, okay? And then uh, we'll just go forward from that. And I, I got a knock on my office door this morning, and, and Bobby brought heaven in. Heaven trusted Jesus yesterday, and she wanted to share that with me. And that's good news, isn't it? Also yesterday we had a young lady in Upward that give her heart to the Lord. Thursday night we had three young ladies that give their hearts to the Lord. And so it's been a great week. God has certainly blessed us and we appreciate that. It's also, as Chad has mentioned, it's been a, a week of tragedy. Uh, Eric Baker's nephew was killed instantly. He was sitting at a traffic light and a man that they think that had already passed away, lost control of the car, hit him, and, and he was ushered into eternity. And just down here, down the road in, in Norwood, uh, a great friend of mine for many years, Faye Courier, she was in an accident, and, and she lost her life. And then I was reading in the paper at Clinton High School, a 16-year-old 16, 16 young lady that, uh, as far as I can understand, died instantly this week, died without any warning. And so it's been a tragic week for a lot of families. But I was thinking about how that God is the God of all comfort, and I'm so glad that He is. Even in the most dire situation, He always comes through for us, doesn't He? Oh, it's just good to know Him. I want to also say today it's good to have Phil Poe and his family back with us. I, I told him I was wondering when they get off that missionary trip that they was on. They've been on it now for the last few years, but... He's the pastor at Bishopville, and they took off today. And they're with us this morning, and we're so glad to have Phil and Angie and their family with us uh, today. And, and then on the front row, I have a good friend of mine that I worked with at the railroad for many years, Jeff Rail. He's come to worship with us this morning. And Jeff, it's so good to have you. But I want to turn your attention this morning to the Word of God, and then I'll, while you're turning there, John chapter 11, verse number 32. I'll make just some quick announcements, and then I'll make the rest of them tonight. Uh, and I lost one of them. Don't give me anything and expect me to keep it. By the way, somebody gave me an envelope with money in it for Tara, and I don't know who it was. And uh, I need to know so I can tell them who gave me that money. Uh, folks give me stuff all the time, and, and, and uh, I'm not a very good middleman. I, I don't, I, especially if you... If, you bring me envelopes that got, that's got money in it, you'll probably never see it again. <laughs> but uh, Elvis would like to meet uh, after church in Jerry Darty's room to those that he's approached to help with Courageous. By the way, that'll start this Tuesday night at 6.30. Also, the women's Bible study will be Tuesday night at 6.30. And uh, they've been having a wonderful time. And uh, I know that they've been helped with this Bible study. And I'm trusting God that he'll help us men. We're a little harder to help than the women are. And so you pray extra hard for us. But uh, if you can come out and be a part of either one of these Bible studies, why, you would be most welcome. And I believe it would help you. Let's look in God's Word together. John chapter 11, verse 32. Would you stand with me today as we uh, honor and give reverence to the reading of God's Word? One verse of Scripture. I've been preaching, starting last Sunday, a series of messages on Addie's feet, talking about Mary, that uh, we find her three times in Scripture at the feet of Jesus. 
This is the second occasion. Last week we looked how that she would be at his feet and she was just devouring every word that he had to say. Encouragement came to her that day because she took the time to sit at the feet of Jesus. I, I trust this morning that you have come with that same attitude that you want to spend some time at the feet of Jesus. John chapter 11, verse 32. Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. Father, we thank you this morning for the precious word of God. And Lord, for this meeting that I've been a privilege been privileged to be a part of. Lord, how that you've helped me today. Encourage me, Lord, and I pray that you'll use me to encourage those that are here. Lord, we ask today as we look into your word that you'll speak to us. Lord, may we take time, Lord, just to gather ourselves at the feet of Jesus. And Lord, we'll be careful for whatever you do for us to thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. I didn't read a lot of scripture. There's a lot of scripture that I could have read. But the background of this story is that Lazarus, the brother of Mary and Martha, has died. When Jesus arrives, we find Mary once again at his feet. I did a little study on feet. It's not the most interesting topic that you can come up with, but I, I was read an article about women's feet. Uh, and I discovered this, and ladies, it'll be a help to you this morning if you'll listen to me. <laughs> Women are four times more likely to have problems with their feet than men are. And according to this article, the reason is nine out of ten women wear shoes that are too small. <laughs> and they recommend that uh, you buy your shoes in the afternoon after you've been on your feet for a while because that's when your feet are swollen. And they also say this, that the average woman, the reason that she has more problems with her feet is because uh, on an average day, she'll walk three miles more than a man will. Women are always on the go. I, I discovered that when I first got married. I thought I could keep up with Shauna. I just got out of the army, and I was a macho man. <laughs> and then she took me to the Oak Ridge Mall. Of course, back then, it wasn't a mall. But we started at one end, and we went to the other end, and we looked at everything on the way. And, and then we came back, and we looked at everything again. <laughs> and, and I was wore out by the time uh, that day was over. But, you know, as we think about sore feet, Martha must have had sore feet. She was always on the go. Last week, we saw where that her and Mary, her sister, they opened their house to Jesus and his 12 traveling companions. And while Martha was on her feet all the time, she was scurrying around, worried about every little detail of life. The Bible says that Mary, she kneeled at the feet of Jesus and she savored his word. I, I believe that she hung on every syllable that he uttered because these were words of life. And they were words that were coming from the mouth of the Master. And so she was just enamored with the words of our Lord and Savior Jesus. But at his feet, Mary discovered one thing that matters most in life, and that is to have fellowship with our Lord. The Apostle Paul said, My fellowship is with God and with his Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so this morning, as we look at this event that has taken place, Jesus has been across the River Jordan. He's been ministering. We don't have a lot of details about what went on there, but he gets word that Lazarus is sick. And Jesus makes the decision to stay two more days where he's at. And then after two days, they begin that two-day journey. It's 20 miles from where they're at. It's hot. It's uh, hard ground. In fact, if you look at the... Uh, uh, if you look at the terrain, it's uphill from where he's at to the city of Bethany. And so it's a long, hard, two-day journey. The Bible says that Jesus loved Martha and Mary and their brother Lazarus. 
And yet he stays two days. But finally, he says to the disciples, let us go into Judea again. And so they begin that journey. When they get there, it's too late. Lazarus has already died. The mourners, he can hear them before they ever get into the city because back in those days when they had a funeral, it, it was a, a very elaborate occasion. I mean, they would put dust upon their heads and they would rip their clothes and they would hire musicians and they would mourn to the top of their voices. And so before he ever got to the house of Mary and Martha, he could already hear the screams of those whose hearts had been broken because of the loss of their brother and their friend. Oh, but when he gets there, Martha runs out to greet him. She's always the hostess. She's always making sure that things are taken care of. She's the strong one, at least from the perspective of most folks. That's what they would think. I believe that she handled all the funeral details. I believe that she made the arrangements. She selected the flowers. She picked the plot. She contacted the local rabbi to conduct the services. I mean, she's so busy, she doesn't even have hardly time to grieve. And it just doesn't seem quite over to her. And she's right. It's not over because Jesus always has the last word. When he gets there, things change. And they change radically. The Bible says Mary comes out, and when she sees him, she falls at his feet. And she said, Lord, if you'd have been here, my brother would not have died. Oh, she knew exactly where she needed to be. And during a time of tragedy, it was at the feet of Jesus. Oh, sometimes it takes tragedy to drive us to his feet. But I'm glad that he always welcomes us, no matter what the circumstances might be. We're always welcome at the feet of Jesus. I found myself many times, and especially in these days of sickness, just gathering myself at his feet. And I found it's a source of comfort just to be able to uh, uh, kneel at his feet and to listen to his words. And, you know, the world, that all that you hear from the world is bad news. When I kneel at the feet of Jesus, I'm glad it's good news. And the good news is this, the bad news is wrong. There is hope. There's hope. Oh, Mary, before she could discover, though, the power and the compassion of Christ, she first had to experience the pain of calamity. Her brother's dead. She loves her brother. I believe that she remembers uh, the laughter in the house, and, and that laughter has been silenced by death. And then she chuckles a little bit because she remembers probably the times that she tells Lazarus, Buddy, you better get your feet off of Martha's end table before she gets in here. <laughs> and so there's good memories and there's painful memories. Most of all, though, she's just fallen apart. Her brother is dead. And in agony, she cries, Lord, you should have been here. If you'd have been here, my brother would not have died. You know those same words, they came from Martha's mouth just moments earlier. But they don't seem to have quite the impact that Murray's words have. Because the Bible says that uh, when Mary gets up to go to the tomb of Lazarus, everybody goes with her. I believe there's something about Mary that has captured their attention. Mary is the one that is always looking for something that she can do to draw herself closer to her friend, the Lord Jesus Christ. There's a magnetism about her that draws people to her. And I say this this morning, if you'll draw nigh to God, there'll be a magnetism about your life too. Oh, in those difficult days when folks are going through things that they don't understand, Oh, when they look at you and they remember in times of crisis, they've always found you at the feet of Jesus. They'll want what you've got. Mary, Lord, if you'd have been here, 
And even the neighbors, they chime in and they say in verse 37, Could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind that could have caused that even this man should not have died? Now that's a fair question. After all, Jesus does tarry for two days, doesn't he? But he arrives too late. And the question is, where were you? Why wasn't you here? Why didn't you do anything? How could you let this happen? I suspect this morning that many right here in this building have asked the same questions. Lord, couldn't you have done something about this? I was talking to Eric and he said that his brother, the question that he's been asking is how could God allow his son-in-law to die like he did uh, this past Friday? How could that happen? That God would allow that? Oh, we often ask those questions. But I want to remind you of something. God is sovereign. God can do whatever God wants to do. And you and I don't have to understand. We've just got to trust and obey and know that he's still in control. Lord, why was it you here? That's the question. Have you ever looked toward heaven and asked the same type of question? Sure you have. I've heard all my life people have said, it's wrong to question God. You don't find that in the scriptures. It's wrong to question his authority. But it's never wrong to ask God why. Some of the greatest people that you'll read about in the word of God, they ask why. Even our Savior asks why. Why hast thou forsaken me? It's a legitimate question. It may not have an answer in this lifetime, but it's all right to ask God why, but it's never all right to question his authority or his decision making. I mean, he can do what he wants to do. Is he not God? Oh, yes, he is. He'll do what God wants to do. And so Mary just asked why. Have you ever, and I know this is a, Question that don't even need to be asked. All of us here, we've mourned the passing of a loved one. Many in our neighborhood right now, many in our church family this past week have uh, suffered the loss of a loved one. Taken them by surprise. Maybe you've been praying and praying and praying for God to work a miracle in your marriage and it don't look the miracle like the miracle is coming. Maybe you've struggled with addiction to drugs or alcohol. Let me just say this this morning. It's not just the families of lost people that endure, that experience that. It's happening in the church world. And many right here this morning, your hearts are broken because a loved one, or perhaps you yourself, is addicted to drugs or to alcohol. Oh, you try to get... Ask that you try to pray. It seems like your prayers get nowhere, and you ask, "Where is God when I need? When I need Him, uh, doesn't He understand what I'm going through?" God seemingly is nowhere near when they need Him the most. Seems like He doesn't show up on time, but He always is on time. He is an on-time God. And he comes according to his time schedule, not ours. Always shows up at the right time. He's not forgot you. Oh, I'm telling you, when I, I said that, my soul, my soul was stirred. He's not forgot us. Even though it may seem like heaven is silent, he's not forgot us. Secondly, I want you to notice it wasn't just the pain of her calamity. But I'm glad that I can say to you it was a place of comfort she found at the feet of Jesus. Mary discovered that. She discovered that at the feet of Jesus she rose up hastily and went out and the others followed her. She's been to the tomb, but now she's not going to the tomb. She's going to Jesus. I believe she's been to the tomb dozens of times over the past four days trying to make sense out of what's happening. And she can't make any sense, but she knows if I could just find myself at the feet of Jesus, I can find the comfort that I need. 
Notice this. She was right. Verse 33. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. And then in verse 35, the shortest verse in the Bible, but a powerful verse, Jesus wept. Jesus wept. You know, the greatest comfort that you can give folks that are going through times of crisis is compassion. You don't have to have all the answers. I've discovered, especially in visiting hospitals and being with families that have got bad news from the doctor, got a a phone call that devastated their world, I've discovered that sometimes the best thing that you can do is just sit down and cry with them. You don't have to have the answers. I thought about a little story that I read. A little girl was late getting home from school and her mama was worried. And when she got there, she asked her, she said, Honey, why was you so late? And she said, Well, she said, I was walking with my little friend Jamie. We was on our way home and it was show and tell day at the, at the school. And she had brought a little china doll that her grandma had given her. And we was on the way home from school and some boys, they jumped out and they began to tease us and harass us. And she dropped that doll. And I stayed with her. And her mama said, oh, said, honey, that's wonderful that you would stay with her and help her to pick up the pieces and try to put that doll back together. And she said, oh, no, mommy, that's not what I did. She said, I just sat down with her and cried with her. Sometimes that's what folks need. That's what Jesus is doing. Jesus is weeping with them. He's not weeping because Lazarus is dead. He knows in just a matter of moments, Lazarus is going to get up out of his tomb. And so he's not weeping because Lazarus is dead. He's weeping because their hearts are broken. And tears are the language that God understands. We live in a world of hurting people. I read this statistic. Americans buy 3 billion Tylenol every year. God has the answer for your headache. There's 844,000 divorces every year. God has the solution to your heartache. He knows where you're at. He knows what you're going through. I share this with some folks a lot of times, how that God is the God of all comfort. But I want to read that verse in the context in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. I want you to listen to it carefully. It'll help us this morning. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies. Right right there is enough to shout about. The Father of mercies and the God of all comfort who comforted us in all of our tribulation. And this is why, so we can help one another, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. There's comfort at the feet of Jesus. Can I say to you this morning, amazing things happen at the feet of Jesus. She found a a place of comfort, and last of all, she discovered the power of Christ. After taking time to weep, Jesus comes to the tomb of Lazarus and asks him to move the stone. Then the Bible says that Martha protested. She always does, doesn't she? (laughs) I think that's probably why she wasn't married. Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. She had no idea what the Lord's about to do. He tells her, thy brother shall rise again. And again, she has to interrupt. I know that he'll rise again in the resurrection at the last day, but Jesus sets her straight. I'm not only the answer for the future, I'm the answer for the present. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth on me shall never die. Believest thou this? Martha has to confess, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, who should come into the world. Oh, Jesus goes to the tomb Cries with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead and been bound with 
grave clothes and a napkin, he came forth. Jesus tells those that are there, loose him and let him go. It's often been said, but I want to repeat it again this morning. If he hadn't prefaced what he said by saying, exclusively Lazarus come forth, everybody around there within the sound of his voice would have got up out of their graves. And he just said, come forth because he is the resurrection. A few years ago in Newsweek magazine, there was an article about uh, Greenville County, South Carolina. It's a letter that the Department of Social Services had sent to a person, and this is what it said. To whom it may concern, your food benefits, your food stamp benefits will be stopped effective immediately because we have received notice that you have passed away. But this is the real clincher. You may reapply again if there's a change in your circumstances. <laughs> there's not been a change in too many circumstances like this. But I want to go on record this morning and say there will be. The Bible says that when he comes again, the dead in Christ are going to rise first. And then we that are alive and remain under the coming Lord, we'll be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And I like what Paul concludes that chapter with. Wherefore, because of this, comfort one another. That's our comfort this morning. That's the comfort that Jesus gave to Mary and to Martha. Your brother is going to rise again but it's not so far out there as you think. It's now. And I want you to notice what he's saying. He talks about it being a now God. I am the resurrection and the life. I am. That's present tense. And you know what my Bible tells me in the Psalms? That he's a very present help in time of trouble. He has the power to Resurrect your finances, your family, your faith. Most importantly, he has the power to resurrect you. I want you to listen to me for a moment. I'll come to a close here in just a little bit. If you've never trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, you're a dead man or a dead woman walking. The Bible says you're dead in your trespasses and sins. And there's only one hope for you. And you know what it is? It's a resurrection. And only Jesus can give a resurrection. And so if you're here today and you're in that condition, you don't know Him, you've never trusted Him as your Savior, then I'm asking you from the very bottom of my heart today, let today be the day that you come and you surrender your life to Him you leave this place with joy like you never dreamed was possible, knowing that your name has been written in the book of life. And if you're here today and you're going through your own pain and calamity, and I know some of you are, I tell you where you'll find your comfort at. It's at his feet. At his feet. So I'm going to invite you. Connie's going to lead us in a song of invitation. I'm going to ask you to stand. These folks here that are willing to pray with you, willing to help you. But I'm going to ask you to, right now, to get rid of your pride, if that's what keeps you from coming to Jesus, or fear. I'll guarantee you that if you'll make the effort, God will help you to overcome that fear if that's what it is. I'm going to ask you to come and meet Jesus at his feet. And just tell him what you need. And trust him to take care of whatever your problem is. He can save you if you're lost. He can help you this morning if you're in a place that it looks like there's no help available, folks. He's available to help you. So I'm going to ask you this morning as we sing, mind the Lord. If you need to come, slip out of your seat and come. Let somebody help you this morning.
It's not a love that just has to stand back and say, I've done everything that I know to do. I, I don't know how to help them, but it's a love that crosses all boundaries. It's a love that goes with us all the way, even to the end of the world. It's a love that meets us at those points of calamity in our life. Whatever the problem is, whatever the situation is, there's nothing too hard for God to handle. I'm glad of that, aren't you? I've run into situations that was beyond my power to help with. I've been in situations personally that I didn't know where the help was coming from. But then I was reminded of what the psalmist said. I will look under the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. I'm going to ask you, we're going to sing, continue to sing. And if you need to come, please slip out of your seat and come this morning. Allow him to meet you right now. When the world seems cold and your friends Amazing things say, happen at his feet. There is someone who cares for you. With tears in your yes. eyes. It's been a, a, a blessed day to be able to be in God's house together. I appreciate you coming out. It's a beautiful day the Lord has given us. We could say this on any day, even the worst of days, but especially on a sunshiny day, this is the day that the Lord hath made. 
and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I, I was so thankful for the sunshine this morning. Wasn't you on your way to church? Just to see the sunshine. That's God that has blessed us with the warmth of that sunshine, and we ought not to ever take that for granted. I want you to come back tonight. We're going to have our upward time of recognition, and hopefully there's going to be several parents that will be here with their children that don't come to our church, but they're going to be our guests tonight. And I do want to share this with you, that during this upward year, there's been eight precious young people that have trusted Christ as their Savior in upward. Eight young people. It's been good to be here. I'm going to do something this morning. I'm going to ask Phil, would you come down here? And This is uh, Pastor Phil from Bishopville. <laughs> We're so glad to have him and his family with us today. And, and uh, I, was, I was talking to somebody the other day. There's been a lot of preachers, pastors that have come through here. They just made a stop on their way to where God would have them to be. And, and I hope that we have been a help to them. And I believe that we have. And I, I appreciate Phil, the work that he's doing. I get word all the time of great things that are happening over at Bishopville. Souls that are being saved. And, and to God be all the glory. Phil, would you dismiss us in prayer? Our Heavenly Father, we're so thankful that there's always peace at your feet. I've had renewed strength talking to you at your feet just to be able to look up in your eyes knowing how much you love me. I'm thankful that I was able to be here today with my family, my church family. I know one day we'll all be together again. Lord, when you come again, we're just thankful for your spirit of God today that will draw people and change people, would encourage them today. Lord, as they make their way today, the Father, they would just trust you if they're not saved and Lord for those that just need a resurrection in their lives a renewal of their, of their commitment with you and their family and their, Lord just let that happen today I'm thankful again to be with my friends in Jesus name Amen